stunning day in SoCal. We welcome you to Pacific Palisades. We're about oh, 15 miles or so from downtown Los Angeles. Here at famed Riviera Country Club, established in 1929. And nearly a century later, this timeless classic still stands up to the modern day player on the PGA Tour. Golf Channel and the PGA Tour proudly present On the Range, live at the Genesis Invitational. Just about every great player in the game's history you can imagine has won here, with a couple of notable exceptions. Jack Nicklaus never won here. Tiger Woods never won here. Well, Tiger will get that opportunity here this week. The tournament host is a competitor in this 70-man field as he makes his 16th career start here at Riviera. This is the seventh event of the PGA Tour season, the third signature event, $20 million purse on offer with 20% of that, $4 million large going to the champion. Players doing their final preparations here just after 2 o'clock Pacific time here on this Wednesday at Riviera. Rory McIlroy will begin the competition in the tournament proper tomorrow, 2.54 Eastern time. So we will set the table for the next 90 minutes. Glad to have your company. I'm John Swansek. Pleasure to be alongside Steve Scott, Jay Townsend as well. When last we saw Tiger, it was at the Hero World Challenge in the Bahamas in December, and he outlined what seemed to be a very ambitious schedule at the time, Jay. He said, I'm going to tee it up once a month. And we thought, oh, he just had ankle fusion surgery after he withdrew from the Masters in April. Yet here we are. We'll see if he can maintain the cadence of that schedule, but it all starts here, one tournament at a time. Well, as a Tiger fan, I love that idea of him <laughs> playing uh, once a month. But he skipped January. Maybe he'll throw in two one month. So, but, I mean, next month is the players. We have to expect him to play there. That would be his one start in March. But it's so great to have Tiger playing. I mean, you talk about Tiger possibly winning this week. We're the winner because we're watching Tiger this week. <laughs> Throughout his illustrious career, Steve, the goal, the sing singular goal, whenever he got onto the property, was to win. You know that. You tangled with him at the 96 U.S. Amateur. <laughs> we know how the guy is built, but this, these are different times. He's in his late 40s. He's been injury riddled. He's had shifting life priorities. All of that. What do you suppose his realistic and attainable aspirations are for this week? Well, I, I think for him to come out here and and establish himself back on the competitive stage again. I mean, he hasn't played in so terribly long. Uh, played here, made the cut here last last year, 2023. But for him to come out, I think a success, certainly making the cut. He's got a lot of other duties, though, this week as the tournament host. So, But if he can come out, you know, somewhere 30th place finish, I, I think would be probably pretty attainable. I know he, he definitely aspires to a lot more than that. But the big question is, you know, when he's back at home at Medalist uh, to go out there, and, and play on the flat ground, right? When he's out here walking, and we've got some hills, although this isn't the hilliest golf course in the world, uh, I, I think that Tiger, if he can come out and, and really feel like he's got a good footing under him and, and can, uh, he looks like he's walking a heck of a lot better, and the stability in that lower body is going to be very important for him as he can, continues to go. There is uh, only 70 players in the field, but as Steve mentioned, there is a cut. They'll cut it to low 50 and ties and any other player who's within 10 shots of the lead after 36 holes. Jay, he's playing here for the 16th time. That's the most appearances at any event for Woods without winning in his career. It's amazing that he would have never won on this golf course, an iconic golf course. Here's the opening tee shot from last year. Elevated tee, which is always a little bit uncomfortable, but an easy opening par five here at Riviera. It plays basically as a stern par four, one of the easiest par fives on the PGA Tour. It is a gentle handshake to start the day. This was a birdie at 17 for Tiger, who took a little while to kind of knock off the rust to even get into the rhythm of the round. Well, he's the one who definitely loves to rise to the occasion, loves to give the crowd a little bit of a excitement, especially coming down the last. This was a beauty right here. Thrills the crowd as always. And it, you, it's a left to right tee shot at 18. It really sets up for a left to right second shot. It's a golf course that favors a left to right slider all the time. Yeah, these were the highlights, guys, from the third round where he shot that 67, and this place was buzzing on that Saturday. 
The perennially not a great putter around here, though, and I think that's part of the reason why, but greens, you see, run very smoothly. The field here, 70 players, so you've got a you know, very small footprint of players that are going to wrinkle up the greens. This is not the first where you can kind of run out of fairway down there, and it was a brilliant shot into this short par five. How about that one? And this golf course just makes you want to hit good shots. It's so pleasing to the eye with the bunkers and that type of thing. And you have to think that Tiger's thinking kind of a Johnny Miller where he got his last kind of ceremonial victory at Pebble Beach. And Tiger still has the belief. And it looks to me, the little bit we've seen today, that Tiger looks more healthy and more mobile than what he was last year. Of course, he is chasing 83, which would put him at the top of the mountain, Steve. We were all just chatting informally, the three of us, before we went on the air. And you think he's going to get to 83, don't you? I, I, think, I think before it's all said and done, whether it's this week, whether it's another week, Tiger doesn't like finishing second. <laughs> Well, he will have the company of Justin Thomas and Gary Woodland. 12.25 Eastern time on Thursday. Weather forecast looks fabulous, by the way, this week. If you're concerned about you know, cool, crisp conditions and uh, the recovery time for Tiger, looks good for the next four days here. I would have certainly thought that Tiger you know, would have preferred to play early late, more recovery time between the first and second round. But that might not be a choice as a tournament host as well. So he's wearing a lot of hats, John, as you said. Two fifty four Eastern time will be the opening round start for that man. It's crazy. Just the presence of Tiger Woods in any PGA Tour event just sucks up all the oxygen in the room, right? And even someone like Rory McIlroy is, feels like he's a little bit off the radar this week. You know what, that might be better for Rory, you mm -hmm. know, to not have the highlight, you know, the, the spotlight be on him. He can just go ahead and go about his business. We know that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to take all the distracting things around golf away so he can just concentrate on golf. And you know, if you're gonna wander down to the range, get in the grandstand to watch somebody, you wanna kind of saddle up and get comfortable when McElroy is down there. It is just special to watch. He's hitting this muscle back three iron from his manufacturer right there. You saw the ball speed, 157 ball speed. And I don't even know if I drive my car that fast, but the, it's a, that's pretty remarkable. That's usually a, a, a driver speed for many uh, top amateur players. On the PGA Tour, the average driver speed is in the low 170s, 172, 173. So this is a 255-yard carry on a, on a long iron. He took some off of that one. The one before that was 267. Yeah, so I'm keeping track here. But I think what we're looking at here is the launch angle and the ball speed, the consistency. That's what these guys are looking for. That way, you know, they can plan shots out. A little bit lower here at 10 degrees. The ball speed pretty consistent there, right in the mid 150s. And these guys are, they're not trying to chase distance. They can already hit it far. They're looking to be able to repeat time and again. Look how, how nice he's set up. The only thing, if you're going to be critical of Rory's swing, is he takes it back on one plate and really drops it inside a lot. That's a, that's a lot deeper into his body than a lot of other players would be. You know, some guys believe in playing in a one-plane swing. Most believe in a two-plane swing, but that is, is really a lot. Because when you start coming down, your body is rotating to the left. So to get the feel that you're hitting from the inside, most of the time you're actually pretty close to your backswing line. Rory, as you can see from this view right here, you can see that his hands come down a lot behind him and our view is more to the left on the inside. Yeah, some of that is, the, is the, the eye line. As he comes down, you'll notice the bill of his cap start to turn a little bit and start to influence that path quite a bit. The eye line is really a, a big determining factor of where your path is ultimately going to happen, whether it's uh, full swing, whether it's putting, uh, all sorts of things. But Rory, when he goes bad, you're right, he, he, gets, he gets too far from the inside to out and uh, it, it really alters his path, which means he's going to have to manipulate that club face more through the point of impact. And you're going deep early with the with the eye line affecting the club path. I like this stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Watch, just watch the bill of his cap and how it turns. 
and then it turns under and it points out to the right there. And it happens very quickly, but he gets that one a little too much, and that one got a little too far right on him. And these guys are really looking at stuff, and he has access to more information than what we do. He's got, you know, angle of descent, club head, or club face path, or squareness to the path and all that. It's just scary, the information these guys have available. I think if there were launch monitors, track mans, when I was playing, I would have never left the range. I, I would have <laughs> just been a numbers guy. I loved it. Well, this is a number that he's hitting with, with not even a driver. Okay, this is, this is, that looks like a three wood he's sending far and wide, 290 on the carry on that one. Three wood, 171 ball speed? Yeah. That's not fair. No, no, that's, well, he's, he, like, like most of these players out here on the PGA Tour, were gifted with, with bodies that allow them to, to, do, I mean, to do what they want them to do. Obviously, they train each and every week to keep their body strong, to keep it flexible. But the, the ability for the, them to rotate, I think about a Michael Phelps in the swimming world. I mean, there are just God-given talents that these players have. I mean, we've talked about Tiger. He's been given most of the God-given talents. And Rory uh, got a, a lot of the remnants of, of that <laughs> from that. But uh, it's just the, the amazing hip speed and body rotation for not a big guy. And our TrackMan technology, you know, gives you the carry distance. The last couple were 297. He took a little off that 286. But when they're figuring out, when the, when the powers that be at the USGA and RNA are, are testing equipment and everything, they plan on an overall distance of 10 to 15 percent rollout. So if you add in 10 to 15 percent to that 286, let's just call it 290. And uh, so this three wood, you know, is going around 330. You know, that's just pretty 330 to 345. Let's let's call it 340. That's spectacular. Now we're really not messing around. I got the big stick out, Steve. Yeah, this this one's going to go over that fence right there. I've got a feeling. They don't allow you to do that down the street, but at Riviera during the Genesis, we can we can do that. We can carry that 322. And and did you see the apex number? Now, mind you, the average apex on the PGA Tour is 102 feet. Okay, that one <laughs> was 177 feet in the air. And that has something to do with <laughs> you were talking about the bill of the cap, and we're getting a little different angle here. His head goes back to, as we're looking at it, to our left, to his right, because he's, he's trying to launch it up there a little bit higher, as you're talking about. Oh, don't do that. But you, you saw there that the head does fall back a little bit. He's trying to get a higher launch angle. And with a low ball uh, spin speed, that's the key. You talked about spectators getting comfortable watching Rory McIlroy go through his practice routine. He'll stop players in their tracks. You saw Mackenzie Hughes there just following the sound of the ball just exploding off the club face. You know, I heard from guys that were around um, Irish and European amateur golf back when Rory was about 14. They said it just made a totally different sound to everyone else, and it still does at the highest level. I haven't seen a whole lot of Rory this season on the PGA Tour. He's only played once. That was at Pebble Beach. He was tied for 66 after 54 holes, and, of course, that's as many holes as we played when Wyndham Clark was declared the champion. So we'll see if he can build on something that he may have identified that week, Steve, and uh, move forward with it here this week. Yeah, each each play. I mean, look, if if these players are focused on the biggest events on the P, every one of these events are huge. We've got the Players Championship next month. I mean, they, they want to be ready for those and throughout the year. Uh, and some players, you know, depending on who they are, they're going to peak at different times of the year. They know the grasses and the courses that they play better on. But uh, Rory is, is uh, he, he's just, uh, he's really dialing it up right now. He's got a lot of things uh, going in his favor. And, um, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me to see him in that final group on Sunday. And two weeks ago at Pebble, the only second time Rory's ever uh, played there, he's playing these events because they're signature events. Just a nice, smooth driver for Rory. He's not even really trying to air that out. 176 ball speed, kind of three quarters. 
Yeah, that, was, that might have been uh, Corey Connors, actually. His number's on the right side, I believe, if I could see that correctly. Yeah, so there's two players, actually, uh, that they're showcasing. So moving through the top of the bag, our tracing technology is provided by TrackMan. A swing that was once described to me as an intoxicating mix of power and elegance. It is, and I think what, what you see from Rory McIlroy that you don't see from a, a Scotty Scheffler, who we know all strikes the ball at the most top elite level on the PGA Tour, it's the footwork. Let's watch the footwork. I, think, I always think the two most important connections in the golf swing, certainly your hands to the club, because that's what controls the club, but the feet to the ground are very important. He really sticks his finish as good or better than anybody. Watch his feet. Just, just very stable. The stability there has led him to that great driving. It, it always amazes me when I watch Scotty Scheffler because his feet do move around a lot. His base does seem to move, but obviously the results don't bear that out. Well, Scheffler is clearly the, you know, the exception to the rule. Most of the time when you're trying to build a repeatable swing, you want a good foundation. I mean, you wouldn't build a building on marbles, okay? <laughs> and uh, that's why week in and week out in commentary, when you're watching Scheffler, it, Every analyst, every former player is in wonder at how he can be so consistent with his footwork. But this is just great. Watch the left foot. You see a lot of top professionals slide their left foot around. Rory's foot, his left foot stays in the same place. So he's going over to a strong left side, a firm left side. He's hitting against it, but he's hitting against the same feel every time. The angle of that left foot is not changing through the swing. We'll see, you know. The guy that comes to mind, Justin Thomas, I think there's a decent chance we're going to see him later on. It's all about the footwork. I totally agree, Steve. Sixth career start here at Riviera for Rory, who has finished in the top ten on three occasions. And we have not seen him here since uh, 2022, so a couple of years ago. And he gets uh, an early afternoon Pacific time start to the opening round on Thursday. Looking to build on a career scoring average of 69.65 on this par of 71 here at Riviera. Getting set to host the United States Open in 2026. So many events of great magnitude have been staged here through the years. I think one of the key things, Steve, that I take from Roy McElroy's setup, and much like Jack Nicholas. Tiger Woods, I mean, the great players in the game, they tend to have very square setups. Okay, they're not, they don't have anything off, like their shoulders are aiming right or left. They're set up for a good shot. And, you know, for amateurs at home, most mistakes happen at the address position before you ever start the club in motion. I mean, if you have a bad setup, you have to make a poor swing to hit it online. If the ball's out of position, or if your alignment's not right. So that's what these top players do so well. Beautiful close-up of his grip right there. But all the lines do match. 100% right. All right, looks like Rory is starting to wind it down a little bit. Graham Dillette is our man on the ground on the range at Riviera this week. And he's going to spend a few moments chatting with Rory. We're going to slip away to a break here for a couple minutes, but remind you that PGA Tour live coverage starts at 10:15 Eastern time on Thursday morning. Golf Channel's first round coverage right here begins at 4 o'clock Eastern time. The opening round of the Genesis Invitational. We are on the range here at Riviera. Justin Thomas just arriving. Rory McIlroy will chat with Graham Dillette when we return to Pacific Palisades in a moment. We take you back to the 2021 edition of the Genesis Invitational. Max Homa was tangling with Tony Finau in sudden death. And he would run into some issues here at the par 410. He had to kind of engineer something special, and he pulled it off, didn't he? 
This hole you can get in a lot of weird spots on that 10th hole right there. That green is so tiny. Pretty miraculous shot to get to there. So Homa made that for par back at 10 to extend the playoff. Finau needed to have that one and that was the end of it. Max Homa, the kid who grew up not far from Riviera, Valencia, California, got to accept the trophy from Tiger Woods after winning the Genesis in 2021. Of course, has gone on to become a prolific winner in his home state of California. Took the title at Torrey Pines at the Farmers, won a couple times up north at the Fortinet Championship as well. Yeah, it's amazing how West Coast guys play well on the West Coast. I mean, Home is a, a wonderful player. He's won at uh, you know, some of the top courses on the East Coast as well. Let's not forget that you know he's won at Quail Hollow and, uh, and Wells Fargo up in uh, the D.C. area. This game travels. I think everyone's kind of surprised he you know, hasn't featured better in majors. They used to say he was sneaky long, but he's not sneaky anymore. Everybody knows so about him. <laughs> Check out Max's track record here through the years. Almost secured a second title last season with a 15 under par finish. And that is a fabulous record with a fifth place showing back in 2020 as well. He's a ball striker. You know, this is a, a golf course that really requires you to shape the ball. And uh, he can do that. He's got length, drives the ball straight. I think he has so much self-belief now, and that's so important in professional golf. It's really everything. I mean, we, we saw it at the President's Cup, right, at Quail Hollow there, and I mean, the, the ability to step up and make big putts under pressure and to hit shots. I mean, it, the work that he's done with Mark Blackburn on his game, uh, you can't discount any of that either. All of these players, they all have their teams, don't they? Uh, they all, this, this is not a, a one person show they obviously have their their caddy uh, there's lots of people that are really involved with all that success with Max there too Max is either on social media or looking at video clips of his swing hard to tell could be either well I'm going to give you a third choice he's got his launch monitor information on his phone and that's probably what it is I think he's probably not texting and we've got Grant Gillette on the ground for us uh, this week Graham, you teed it up there six times through the years, finishing eighth in 2015. Pretty special place, isn't it, my man? Always one of my favorite events of the year, no question. You come down to Southern California, you get this sunshine. Uh, you know, last week with a ton of rain, this golf course is one of those places where you really, it's all about precision iron play, especially getting yourself in position off the tee and just hitting the greens in the past. When the greens get firm, everything almost has to land in that front third portion just to keep it on sometimes. With this Kakulia fairways, you can't really chase anything up. It lands just short and it stays. So the precision iron game is key, especially when it's firm. And with all this rain here the past week, I think there was a lot of people thinking that, uh, you know, it would allow a lot more players to kind of, you know, be in contention here this week. But talk to all the guys, I've walked around, and it's really firmed up. The green's almost exactly where they want to be, um, you know, in previous years. Yeah, sounds good. Graham brings up a good point. There was a lot of rain. The forecast for the rest of the week looks uh, fabulous. But uh, this course did take on a fair amount of rain, but playing fast, ready for the start of the competition on Thursday. I think all these players, they're due some sunny skies and those blue skies out there you see in the distance. Uh, they, they, there's been a lot that they've had to deal with mentally, not just physically the last few weeks through Pebble and uh, through last week in Phoenix as well, surprisingly. But they're, they're definitely owed some very good weather and kind of a quote-unquote normal week where they can prepare properly and, and just do everything. And the, the, the timing of the week is something that they're accustomed to. I think that's very important for the success. Well, I'm just glad to hear, you know, Graham talking about the courts is forming up and the greens are getting where they want to. It only takes a couple of sunny days when these type of greens will dry out and get very firm. And I, like Graham, I love the yeah. fact that you've got to really work the ball into the green and, and your pitch point isn't necessarily right next to, you know, where you want it to finish. You, you, you've got to maybe play the slope and run a little bit as the ball's going to release, especially coming out of the Kikuya rough. It's a, uh, a rare grass that the PGA Tour plays on, so it's much different. Uh, it's kind of spongy, hence Graham was talking about they can't run the ball up on the green as readily if you get a bad lie in the rough. A lot of times here, if you're in the rough, you're also you know, kind of under trees as well, so it makes it very well, it's like, difficult. It's funny because it's like, oh, we got to leave. Like, traffic will be a nightmare. It's like, 
What if we just decided to tell Max, like, hey, I got some of the numbers there that are being dished out on his irons right here. And there's lots of information that these launch monitors, like the track man, they dish out to these players. Sometimes these players are only focused on a few numbers, though, and as they get closer to that bell ringing Thursday morning or afternoon, whatever that first round is for them, they're going to focus less on technical golf swing things, really focus in on the carry numbers. Those are those things that are, are very important for those players each and every day as the, as the adrenaline kicks up during tournament time as well. You guys talked about the importance of self-belief and how transformative that has been in the ascent of Max Homa. This was a guy who was suffering a pretty severe crisis of confidence just a handful of years ago, struggling to not only graduate from the Corn Ferry Tour, but to stay at the top level on the PGA Tour. And he just got to work and dug it out of the dirt. And here we are, six PGA Tour wins later, Jay. Another great example of that is Wyndham Clark. And look where it's got him, that self-belief. There's a look at the iconic 10th where some of the players will start their round tomorrow. It is a devilish par <laughs> four. I love drivable par fours without water so you can just have a go at it. You're not playing defensive and they do it at 10, but uh, it is such a tough green if you can get it out of position off the tee. Under the watchful eye and tutelage of his father, Mike, the only swing coach he's ever had, Justin Thomas goes to work here. You saw that little move that he was doing, that little rehearsal move right before he pulled the trigger on that one. That maybe wasn't his favorite swing, but what he's trying to do, he his golf DNA, and every, all these players have have swing DNA that they really lean back on and they were born with. Justin Thomas, his left arm gets very high in the backswing. Watch how high his hands get. And so he's just trying to make sure he gets a little bit more rounded with his golf swing, which getting those hands a little lower as far as opposed to the sky. Is don't go straight up with it. But the, the, his driving capabilities in the last few years, not his best suit. Last season was 154th in driving accuracy. The two seasons before that, 167th and 169th. Uh, so far this season, 125th. So there is a slight bit of improvement, but if he can get a few more in those fairways, golf becomes a heck of a lot easier for Justin Thomas. Of course, last season for Thomas ended with a furious bid to qualify for the FedEx Cup playoffs. He was adding events that weren't initially on his schedule toward the end of the season, literally came down to the final hole in Greensboro at the Wyndham Championship it did not qualify for the playoffs, Jay. And I'm just wondering what sort of start to 2024 we were going to witness. It has been very encouraging with three finishes inside the top 12. Well, I think that's kind of a, uh, a gut punch for a player of Justin Thomas's ability. I mean, he's a perennial, you know, Ryder Cup, President's Cup player, you know, two-time major champion. He He's at the top echelon of the game. And I don't think he liked at all not being in the playoffs. I think, you know, January last year, he would have guaranteed you he was going to be in the playoffs. I think it was a shock to him more than anybody else because of his self-belief. I don't think uh, he lacks it. I love the uh, the alignment stick down there. I'm a huge believer in, in as Steve said, uh, a few moments ago we were talking, watching Rory McIlroy, you know, having good lines, having everything match up. If I was going to critique Justin Thomas's swing, it would go back to what we were just talking about with McElroy, the footwork. Watch the left foot. I mean, he gets up on his toes and that type of thing. It's just not a consistent base. JT, TW, Gary Woodland, who received one of the sponsor invites this week. Gary's about five months removed from that harrowing brain surgery that he underwent. And that's a guy who is viewing his life, his career through a very different lens these days. The two PGA Championships for Justin Thomas, as Jay mentioned, and the Players Championship as well. I still think of that five wood he roped off the 18th tee on Sunday, which seemed to roll forever on the way to a par at the last to secure the title. So we saw Rory going through his uh, work a little bit earlier and we heard from Graham Dillette as well. 
the two of them were able to connect for a little bit chat, a little bit of a chat just a few moments ago. Okay, down here with Rory McIlroy. Rory, I love watching shot makers warm up and practice on a Wednesday, playing with a lot of different trajectories with your driver. Is that a standard thing, or is that just to try to prep here for Riviera? Um, I think I'm going to make it more of a standard thing going forward. Um, sort of get into this habit of teeing the ball really high with the driver, and when it works, it works really well. But when you're a little bit off, I think just with the angle of attack being so much on the up that you can sort of start getting it going both ways. So. Um, sort of going back to teeing it down a little lower and um, you know putting a little bit more spin on it and it sort of holds its line better and sort of what I've realized is I don't really lose a ton of speed when I do that but I, I definitely gain you know quite a lot of control which is nice. Yeah and speaking of control I mean this golf course known to be a shot makers uh, type of course you're obviously one of the best shot or shot makers in the entire world what is it about this golf course that you love and can you kind of get that first win here now? I would like to, yeah. I mean, I think there's certain golf courses that we play that, you know, I would certainly love to win on. One of them would be here. Another would be Muirfield Village, at, you know, at Jack's place as well. Um, and I think, you know, I've, I've played pretty well here before, but, you know, I think this golf course, especially if it gets a little firmer, like it just requires that extra level of precision that I probably haven't had here over the last few years. And um, and I think that starts with off the tee and sort of what I'm talking about with, you know, hitting that flight of driver, getting the ball in play here and just giving yourself chances from the fairways, coming into these greens and making sure that you can control your spin and, and try to make sure that you're on the sort of low side of the hole with your approach shots is uh, every time I come back to Riviera, I always I'm somewhat surprised that I don't remember how slopey the greens are and how much they can get away from you in certain spots. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is. As you say, this is a real sort of shot makers and ball strikers golf course, and um, you know I'm looking forward to the test that it that it'll present this week. Well, it'll definitely suit your game well. Play well this week. Thank you. A little glint in his eye there. We'll see um, how the week unfolds for McElroy. Steve, did you like what you heard from Rory about how he's trying to flight the driver? I, I do, for sure. I mean, as we see the dispersion here, and look, he's just trying to rein it in a little bit. If you can tee that ball down, tee it down for control, and tee it high to let it fly, right? That's the old adage. And so uh, that, he lets it fly as well as anybody. If he reined it in just a little bit, I mean, he had uh, last season his distance off the tee uh, he had the third highest carry number of anybody on the tour, 307 yards average carry last season. So even if he gives up a couple yards of carry, you bring the flight down, you're going to get a little extra roll at times, but you're going to have the control. Because if it doesn't get in the air, it doesn't stay in the air too long, it doesn't have as much time to get offline. I'm all about that, Steve. I think you, anytime you're playing out of the fairway, especially with the short irons and wedges like Rory is most of the time because he hits it so far, he's got more short irons than anybody else in the game that, uh, yeah, you want to not only hit it in the fairway, but he talked about, you know, to these small greens and these firm greens and sloping greens, you want to be in the correct side of the fairway to be able to approach some of those tough hole locations that are tucked. So it's all about positioning off the tee. This is a golf course, I think, that you, sometimes you need to play backwards. You look at the pin sheet, and then look back, okay, I want to hit it on this side of the fairway, and then what do I need to do on the tee shot to get it in that portion of the fairway for the angle? So, so kind of when you're standing on the tee getting ready, you play the hole backwards in your mind on how you want to attack it. I think what's really tough, though, when, you, when you're a guy like JT or you're a guy like Rory, who, who have essentially a, a Ferrari at their disposal. I mean, you don't have to drive... 200 miles an hour to the grocery store, right? <laughs> if, I don't if, think you're allowed. <laughs> well, yeah. So, but but my point is, is that right? You you don't need to go full out all the time. You you don't need to go max distance, and sometimes control is a very good thing. Yeah, it took a lot of air out of that one. And so JT and uh, his dad will kind of work through the strategy there and we'll work through the golf course courtesy of this Genesis virtual flyover. Just a beautiful piece of property nearly a century old 1929 was the first ever edition of this event. Front nine historically has played a little bit easier than the back nine maybe a shot or so it all begins at the first which is basically a driver and a seven iron at the par five for these guys. I love this routing I mean George Thomas I mean what a what a Beautiful routing this is, and 
and what prize property this is. You see all the all the homes there and how much this value of this golf course is worth. Uh, but uh, just the, the 14th and the 16th holes specifically and a couple great golf shots we have seen at these specific holes who both travel in the same direction basically uh, on the golf course right here. And both pretty short par threes as well. 16, you know, 163 yards on the card, but look at the well bunkered here. We're gonna get a little lower view in here. Look, look at the face of the bunker, the way it splashes up. It's just so pleasing to the eyes, kind of like a, a beautiful painting that has a wonderful frame around it. And that's what these bunkers do. They set up the shot. Yeah, that, that front right bunker there is is brutal. Everything goes away from you. If you miss it in that short right bunker, all the green really funnels away. Uh, but it's it's a very, very, very touchy hole there. A little peek at some of the hole locations that have been served up here through the years. Uh, some of the players have had their way here at 16. This was Trevor Immelman during his rookie of the year season back in 2006. Hooping one. Wow, that one tried to jump out. It was just too good. Wanted to go in. <laughs> Look back like, in the era of pleated slacks. Yeah, yeah. this was uh, Retief Goosen in 2007, another South yeah. African. And another major champion as well. Two U.S. Oh. Opens. Of course, Immelman won the Masters. And notice that hole location. That's the easier side of the green right there. If they throw any of those hole locations to the camera's left, that back right portion of the green, it gets a little bit more dicey. But I guess these, these players can kind of find any hole from anywhere. They are uh, dialed in. This was Taehoon Kim. This was back in uh, 2021, a little more recently. Same result. Perfect read on that one. <laughs> a little less fanfare and reaction, a little quieter atmosphere, but hey, a win is a win. And with that ace, that young man also won a sweet new ride and a hole in one on the 16th will win the 2024 Genesis GV70 for a hole in one at 16 this year. True luxury craftsmanship, dynamic performance. And the caddy also receives a car as well. 2024 Genesis GV60. It's an SUV with a sleek athletic coupe like silhouette, dynamic high efficiency motor and a host of technologically advanced features designed for modern drivers. Plenty of enticement if you make uh, a hole-in-one at 16 or at 14. A hole-in-one there will win a player a new 2024 GV80. Stunning design, wide-ranging safety features, impeccable performance, ensuring every journey is an unforgettable one. And the caddy will walk away with this 2024 electrified GV70. The perfect mix of performance and sophistication. Much like Stephen Jay. <laughs> Get electrified if I won that thing right there. That's an overhead look at the 16th here. And they have great par threes here. And just the way the golf course is set up, as Steve was talking about, the layout, the flow of the golf course, it's just phenomenal. That is young Chase Johnson. He is the recipient of the Charlie Sifford Memorial Exemption. And he gets to play in Tiger's event. What a moment. Wednesday at Riviera. It's a fabulous day outside of downtown Los Angeles, California. As players make the final preparations in advance of the opening round of the Genesis Invitational tomorrow. Time now for Going for the Green, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, as we examine this field of 70 and identify player value for you. We do it with the expertise of Ben Everill, senior writer for Golf Bet, who joins us. Adam Scott, one of four sponsor invites this week, Betty making his 16th career tournament start. And hey, listen, the odds are shifting a little bit on the Aussie for anyone considering him as their outright winner. I know you are. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, Swanee, to all the lovers out there and everyone back at home and a special one out there to my beautiful Mrs. Janelle. But yeah, let's find some love for you on the DraftKings Sportsbook and we're talking Adam Scott. Plenty of people have loved his swing over the years and I love it here at Riviera. Two-time winner, two-time runner-up and five other top 15s. Saw him out here yesterday, absolutely striping it. I know he wants to make the most of being in the signature event this week on that sponsor's invite. Moving into 2800, plenty of people on him. I'm one of them. 
Adam Scott, much like Riviera, vintage and evergreen, right? There is a strong California contingency here this week. Benny, those guys certainly hold a lot of value. Players like uh, Colin Moore Cowan, Max Homa, Patrick Cantley as well. I know you've got your eye on Xander Shockley for a top 10 prop this week. Xander played with Adam Scott in a little match against Max Homer and Patrick Cantlay yesterday and Scotty and Xander were striping it and absolutely giving it to those other two over the opening five holes. That's what helps me look to Xander for a top ten. He's had a few of those already this year and whether they've been backdoor or not, they have cashed. I think that he's going to be in the mix this week here at Riviera Country Club. He's had quite a few top, tif top 15s in the past here. He's very comfortable, much like Adam Scott. Absolutely. Get on the X-Man. He's going to make a move up this leaderboard for sure. Okay, let's keep the uh, California theme going here with Cantlay. There is a head-to-head -head proposition available in the opening round with Cantlay versus Jordan Spieth and Tom Kim. What do you like? When I saw those tee times, it definitely jumped out of me. As you said, Patrick Cantlay, another California boy, played down the road here at UCLA quite extensively, had plenty of rounds here, and has been very consistent when he's been here at the Genesis Invitational. He r roughly gets around 67, 68 for most of his first rounds, whereas Jordan Spieth, we know, he can be a little erratic. Sure, he can put a low one out there, but he can also put a high one out there. And if the rough is a little wet in the early stages of the rounds, that could be a problem for Jordan Spieth. As for Tom Kim hasn't quite been the player we've expected early in this season. So, yes, the plus 140 on Patrick Cantlay looks pretty juicy to me. Well, I would imagine people watching the tournament this week, Benny, are going to want uh, a little action on Tiger Woods, perhaps, to, to stay engaged. Uh, it's understandable. What are the markets offering with Tiger, by the way? Yeah, Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. It's all Tiger, isn't it, when we get here? And how cool is it to see him back? Look, 130 to 1 to win this thing. And actually, 5% of the bets so far from DraftKings Sportsbook are on Tiger to win. I can't be an advocate for that. Look, it's going to be rusty. Obviously, he's never actually won here despite playing here many times. But as you mentioned, Swanee, plenty of smaller markets are out there. One did catch my eye. You can get Tiger at plus 160 to win the first hole in his first round against Justin Thomas and Gary Woodland. Now, let me throw this at you. Justin Thomas, 29 under on that hole in 32 career rounds. So that's going to be a hard thing for Tiger to do. But his last 12 rounds here on that first hole, 14 under par for Tiger Woods. So maybe he can get this thing kicked off. Maybe he can get an early roar for the crowds that will definitely be here and will be the kickstart we need into a huge Genesis Invitational. That is great information from Ben Everill, senior writer for Golf Bet. Thanks for the time, Ben. Good to see you. Have a great week out there. Will do, mate. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the PGA Tour. And this week, all customers can add plus 300 on any golfer to win the Genesis Invitational. Download the app and use the promo code RANGE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. And we welcome you back to Riviera Country Club and our On the Range coverage here on Golf Channel in advance of the opening round of the Genesis Invitational, the third signature event of the 2024 PGA Tour season. We are loaded with star power here outside of Hollywood, including the reigning FedEx Cup champion, fourth-ranked player in the world, Victor Hovland, who starts the tournament tomorrow at 12.01 Eastern time here at Riviera. Victor will be making his third start of the season. He played of the century out in Maui, finishing 22nd in a short field, and then a showing of 58th at Pebble Beach a couple weeks ago. That's early in the year. I was looking at his stats, and he doesn't really have enough data in there to uh, to really talk about it. I, I went back and looking at his stats from last year, and you know, he drives the ball so well, approaches and everything, and he's working on his short game. His short game has improved a tremendous amount. Actually, uh, come out with some new wedges that he's working on and uh, he feels like that's going to have a big improvement in his wedge play. Graham you got eyes on the man from Norway down there. I do and I'll tell you what guys for a Wednesday this outfit is incredible. I'm going to start <laughs> there but uh, uh, he, he came in hit a few wedges kind of right out of the gates and then quickly right to a mid iron here mid to short iron so uh, just came off the golf course from the Pro-Am, so I think it's going to be a quick little session, although his caddy Shea just told me it could be quick or it could be long with a giggle. 
Yeah, we saw him at the AT&T Pebble Beach a couple of weeks ago on our On the Range show, and there was a little bit of concern. He had some tape around his right wrist during that Wednesday practice that day, and, and maybe that led, maybe there was a little uncomfortableness uh, there with it led to that T T58 finish, um, among other things with the weather, et cetera. But uh, it doesn't appear that, uh, Graham, that he has any tape on his wrist there. Do you see anything? No, everything looks pretty good, and it's like the one, I've been on the range here most of the day, and I've watched a lot of players hit balls and kind of chit-chatting with guys. And you know, there's those few guys out on tour that can separate themselves even that much more from other guys. And Rory's one, you know, when he's hitting balls, especially his driver guys are watching. And then you know, the sound that Victor, when his club matches the turf and the ball at the most perfect time, it's just uh, it's pretty pure, and it's different than most guys out here. He loves that bowed left wrist at the top, and, and he gets the club face. Uh, and, Jay, I'd love to get your input on this, too. But, you know, he gets his club face a lot more closed than most and then just uses his rotary forces, his rotation through the golf ball to, to strike the club. There's a great close-up. Yeah, he definitely sets up right kind of like a coocher and then, uh, you know, kind of comes over the top a little bit and, and plays a cut shot. And the first time I saw Victor Hovland, I was shocked because TV, you know, doesn't really give you a perspective. But uh, he's not a very big guy and hits it a long way. Tremendous amount of power. Boatload one of thing I really like as well, guys, sorry to interrupt you. The one thing that I really like is it, it's, it's very natural. I mean, this isn't a golf swing that you would probably teach a kid from day one and, you know, model off these perfect kind of robotic golf swings that we see a lot on the PGA Tour nowadays. He swings his own golf swing and obviously does it extremely well. Yeah, Graham, I think it's a repeatability that he has. It's a feel that he has he's comfortable with. Definitely, you know, he works on things, but he doesn't make any big changes. Yeah, it really is super consistent. And I mean, like I'm saying, I'm telling you, this is fun to watch. If you're ever on the range at a PGA Tour event, um, you know, grab a seat behind Victor Hoffman and just watch for a while because it's pretty impressive, the repetitiveness. Yeah, representing uh, the colors of those Cowboys in Stillwater, <laughs> Oklahoma here on a Wednesday, helping to lead Oklahoma State in the national championship. Of course, Victor, a United States amateur champion as well up at Pebble Beach where he was the low amateur at the U.S. Open year, won by Gary Woodland. Our tracing technology this week is provided by TrackMan. And how about that dispersion right there? He had a, if he had a caddy shagging those golf balls, that caddy wouldn't have to move very far. You know what would be a great job, guys, is being Victor Hovland's caddy. It pays pretty well, and it's pretty easy. <laughs> Not a bad gig if you can get it. Just a stunning performance in the FedEx Cup playoffs from Victor last year. Now the owner of six PGA Tour victories by the age of 26, making his third start of the season. Nine of the top ten in the world are here, including Hovland. Ricky Fowler, part of this glitzy gathering in SoCal this week as well. He'll chat with Graham DeLette there on the range when we come back. Just a half mile or so from the edge of the Pacific Ocean. At the bottom of the canyon lies gorgeous Riviera Country Club. Established in 1929 and the host of the Genesis Invitational. First round coverage starts tomorrow. Players going through their final preparations on the range. Graham Gillette's there as well. He spoke with Ricky Fowler a little while ago. Okay, down here with Ricky Fowler Wednesday in Southern California. Ricky, a golf course you know and like a lot. Uh, tell us about how the golf course is playing here this week. This place is always fun to come back to. Um, you know, Southern California gotten quite a bit of rain, so to see how good a condition the golf course is, and uh, you know, maybe the greens being a touch on the soft side, but I mean, 
we've got weather like this, I'm looking forward to seeing it firm up a little bit. And if we can dodge some rain this weekend, this is, uh, this is a proper test. Yeah, it definitely is. As a golf course, you can't fake it around. Uh, you know, ball striking out, absolute premium, hitting greens. What are the keys for you this week coming in? I need to drive it better. Uh, I need to hit my irons better. I need to putt better. Um, big thing is getting off the tee, though. Um, yeah, that's, that's where you can at least get things going. It's been a slow start to the year for me, um, not where we were last year. So looking forward to uh, you know, being out here at a place that, like you said, I, I think everyone loves this place. So um, it's a fun challenge. And uh, I think the biggest thing, like I said, I need to drive it well, get the ball in play where I can go ahead and you know, start making some, some freed up iron swings. All right, well, play well. We know everyone here in Southern California will be rooting for you, buddy. Thanks, man. The kid from Murrieta, California, with an honest assessment of the state of his game. Sounds like there's a lot to work on at the moment. He's got to get the ball in the fairway, no doubt. And when you have this Kikuya rough, it can get very sticky here. I mean, he's lost four, uh, lost strokes to the field off the tee in four last five events as Ricky Fowler. So uh, definitely needs to tighten that up for sure. Six-time PGA Tour champion, 15 career runner-up finishes for Fowler, the former Players' Champion. Decent track record here at Riviera through the years with a couple of top 20s in his most recent starts. Adam Scott is a two time champion here at Riviera, twice a runner up as well. He was granted a sponsor invite by tournament host Tiger Woods this week. Much like uh, the golf course itself, Jay Townsend, um, Adam Scott is classy and timeless. And a visual pleasure watching this swing. I mean, this is one that is just so. Picturesque, powerful. He just hits a little high baby draw. Just extreme power. Doesn't you know? Some guys like Justin Thomas. You see, he looks like he's swinging hard. Adam Scott never looks like he's swinging hard. Always looks like he's has a lot left in reserve, but still a tremendous amount of power. Uh, 293 carry. So seriously, getting it out there. And still at 43 years of age, still over the PGA Tour average as far as ball speeds and club speeds. And that's really the secret sauce nowadays, right? You have to, you have to hit the ball forever. And you've got to carry it a long way. 302 yards, that one was in the air. But it's, it's efficient, isn't it? I mean, he doesn't have a lot of extra moving parts. You know, one of the, the things that TrackMan has, you know, we're, we're not getting it on our screen, is the smash factor. And he, he's very efficient, as you said. Smash factor takes all the, all the different analytics in there together. And, you know, when you're in the 1.5 range, and now you have everything working together. You can have a lot of ball or club head speed. And if you're not efficient, the way you're coming into it with the club head, club face angle relative to the path, it's not going to be efficient. Adam Scott just does it well. One of the things about Adam, you know, he's in his 40s, never really had a major injury. So he's never had to change his swing to uh, accommodate aches and pains. It's a swing that really hasn't changed much over the years. Just a very athletic setup. Great flexibility both back and through with the shoulder turn. The body rotation creates that speed we're talking about. 178 mile hour ball speed for a guy that's in his fifth decade. That's uh, saying something. Tremendous fluidity. I love the, the, the flow to his golf swing. There's nothing seemingly hurried. He just he gets it up there and sets the club in a beautiful spot. Well, Steve, don't you think that when you're in the proper position at the top, there doesn't have to be a hurry at the bottom because you're not correcting something that's out of position. Thousand percent. And that's, that's all they're doing, you know, these times leading up to the event, getting, getting, their, uh, getting their lines all correct. And yeah, this is, and, and you know what? This, this is a venue, I mean, for the sponsor exemption into this event this year. I mean, there's, we'll see the sponsor exemptions right here. Will Zalatoris uh, back off of the injury trail, received one of the sponsor invites from Tiger this week, along with Gary Woodman, who will be in the group with Woods, along with Justin Thomas, Adam Scott as well, and Tiger gave one. How, how, how'd Tiger get in here? I don't no, know. <laughs> no quarrel there whatsoever. Yeah, Tiger plays, everyone watches. Uh, he will be uh, 
serious topic of conversation throughout the four days, and it, he'll be around for the four days for sure. I do not see him not being around for the weekend. We'll get another look at Adam Scott. Well, one thing that really suits him well around this this golf course because so many shots are hit between that 150 and 200 yard range. I mean this year he strokes in strokes gained approach. He's ninth in from 150 to 175 and he's fifth in strokes gained from 175 to 200. And those are really key categories out here because uh, you're going to have a lot of those type of shots. And uh, for him, and uh, it bodes well, and that's why he's had so much success around here. A couple wins, a couple runners up, uh, over 15 starts. So it is a game that has traveled with great success around the globe as well, Jay. Much like uh, Ernie Els, Adam Scott has played everywhere and has secured 14 victories outside of his PGA Tour resume. Yeah, he's, with that swing, he can win anywhere. And he, one thing about watching Adam Scott play golf, and when the pressure's on his demeanor doesn't change and I think that bodes well for all the wins and that's how that's been an, a great asset for him over the years 14 victories on the PGA Tour as well for Adam Scott the most recent coming here at the Genesis in 2020 Scott and Max Homa the year after two of the more recent winners here to secure a most coveted title. Now we're about to add Adam Scott to the history here. It's official. A champion on the rise, Max Homa. Okay, time now for Let It Fly, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. That's exactly what we will do. We heard from Ben Ever a little bit earlier in the show. We'll put the guys on the spot. We'll check in with Graham on the range as well. We'll start with Steve. What you got this week? Well, Sonny, I really like the two-pick parlay of Sam Burns and Max Homa. Now, Max Homa, I'm picking him as a top 20 guy this week. Really, I, I like him. He, he hasn't played his greatest golf this year, but as a past champion here back in 2021, Max Homa, uh, I really feel like he'll finish in the top 20. Sam Burns, uh, top 10. He has been a top 10 machine recently. Sam Burns, his game is on. On point right now and what I really like about both of these players and what you need around Riviera is a ball that moves left to right that bullet fade and both those guys hit that very well and plus 414 tasty value there as well Jay got your eye on a three-legger this week oh I went for value all right let me tell you <laughs> I'm, I like match betting you know group betting so I went with Charlie Hoffman chalk last week lost in a playoff although Bo Hostler in the group with Ben Griffin Bo Hostler is a favorite in that group then I next I went with Cam Young I think he's going to win soon, maybe this week. And he is the favorite with uh, Cam Davis and Adam Hadwin. And the last one, because of the left to right ball striking, I went for Matt Kuchar, and that is a big number there. You've got to love those three. All three hit 1944. A couple of really experienced players there. And okay. uh, Cameron Young, who's only getting a look at Riviera for maybe uh, the second time. Um, because of the star power in the field, Grand Villette, there's a lot of chalk out there. What do you have to say about that? Well, I found some good value as well. You look at uh, you look at this golf course, it's all about pure ball striking. You cannot fake it around here. So I'm with two of the best ball strikers in the field, Victor Hovland and Colin Morikawa to uh, parlay to uh, top 10 each. I mean, uh, I think come Sunday afternoon, you got to expect both these guys to be in the hunt. So uh, pretty good value, plus 550 on that one as well. All right, Graham. Thank you, my man. Jay, Steve, thank you guys as well. Uh, you're all set. That's all the information that uh, the guys are serving up to you. And we can also tell you that DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the PGA Tour. This week, new customers can deposit five bucks and get a no sweat bet up to a thousand in bonus bets if your first bet loses. Download the app. Use the promo code RANGE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Welcome back to Riviera Country Club outside of downtown Los Angeles, where we are starting to wind down our coverage on the range and where our Graham Dillette had a chance to catch up with Adam Scott just a few moments ago. 
All right, down here with Adam Scott on the range at Riviera. Scotty, your 16th time here, 15, or your previous seven top tens in your previous 15, obviously including the win in 2020. What is it about this golf course that players love so much? Well, it's such a great track, I mean, and the history here. Uh, but everyone raves about the design if you're into kind of the design thing. It's fantastic. I think famous holes like the six hole with a bunker in the middle of the green and then obviously the tenth hole which gets a lot of talk. So there's a lot, lot going for it here at Riviera and it's a place that I kind of fell in love with early in my career and have played really well here. Yeah, it definitely suits your game well. Uh, we just watched you hit, hit a few balls here with your driver, trying to dial some things in, tell the viewers uh, exactly what you're uh, looking for and working on. Yeah, so I put in a new driver last week and that went well in Phoenix. I drove it well. I drove it a bit straighter than I have been, so that's nice. Uh, and just really checking up week to week to just see if it's spitting out consistent numbers like last week again and uh, trying to get a feel for a new piece of equipment. You know, what happens if you hit a draw? You know, what happens if you hit a fade? You know, where, where I should kind of favor leaning into with this club. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge, like, trackman guy. I don't live in that space, but it is helpful to kind of get some data and see and week to week, uh, especially, um, that the same stuff's happening and um, I'm doing the right things. Well, it looks really good, and your caddy helpful said you're playing really nice golf right now, so good luck this week. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, man. A few more flecks of gray on the, uh, the chin stubble and the sideburns for 43-year-old Adam Scott. Tell you what, he mentioned Phoenix. He played really well last week at TPC Scottsdale, finishing eighth. That was on the heels of a 20th place showing at Pebble Beach. Keep an eye on Adam Scott as a guy to back here this week, has a strong track record at Riviera. Definitely, definitely like him this week. We heard from Ricky Fowler, who chatted with Graham a little bit earlier. 2 yeah, 6 Eastern time is when he'll start tomorrow. And Ricky, you know, pretty much said he needs to do everything better. And, uh, you know, watching Ricky, he's got that alignment stick down there. Looks to me like Ricky's kind of feet are off the alignment of his alignment better. stick. I'm not sure why. That little exchange was about tweaking equipment. Yep, a little bit better. So let's look at the, the feet are going left of the stick. The, they should be pretty much on plane, better than it was earlier before his pro am warm up. And all these little things to try to dial in. And keep in mind, I mean, golf swings, they continue to evolve. Last season, he was so successful. I mean, he gained in basically every major strokes gain category on the PGA Tour. Ricky yeah. Fowler jumped up from the previous season with the of help uh, under the tutelage there of, of Butch Harmon. <laughs> As he's uh, dialing in this three wood here, it looks like, just trying to limit the amount of hook that you uh, find in this club but but you've got to you got to hand it to this guy for being really in the the depths of despair and coming out and coming out to the top of the mountain uh, again at the rocket mortgage last year that was a great win on another classic golf course detroit golf club he was kind of wandering in the wilderness jay for for a couple of years now i mean everything including his normally reliable putter was suffering as he was working through the swing changes that never fully took shape for him. You know, he, he was struggling, and, and it was a week I was working here at PJ Tour Live, and it was it seemed to me like there was one shot that turned things around. I believe it was a six hole at uh, TPC Potomac. It was wet weather. Max Homer went on to win the tournament. It was a Wells Fargo. Uh, it was a year that Wells Fargo was moved there because of the President's Cup being played at Quail Hollow. And it was just one shot that looked to me like turned his confidence around. And um, from that point on, the rest of the year, he really looked like he had a lot of self-belief. And the thing is, is in golf, you can lose self-belief. You can lose your confidence so quickly. I mean, in a shot or two, but it takes a long time to get back, Steve. It does take a long time to get back. As you saw that close-up right there, and you see, you know, consistent play comes from consistent preparation and consistent just simply gripping the club properly every time. If you watched Ricky right there, what he does in between shots and right before he walks into the shot, 
He'll put his left hand kind of by his side there. Let's see if the camera will get to that point there. But the the uh, that left hand, you kind of see it gripping over there to the side over there. He's not even looking at his hand. He's just trying to let his arm hang naturally and then take his grip. That, that's a huge, just a simple thing. Adam Scott actually does the same exact thing. Uh, learned a lot from Butch Harmon, both of them. And I think it's something that if you want to be consistent, you have to grip the club the same way every time. And everybody's arm hangs a little different. Their hand hangs. So uh, that can affect the club face all the time. Oh, you just nailed it right there. Because as you said, everyone's arms hang, the way you're hands hang, you know, whether they're their palms face behind you, exaggerating, your palms face in front of you, exaggerating. Everyone has a different angle. And you're using the physiological advantages of your body as opposed to going against it, working on a certain type of grip. Well, here's this close. Watch his hands right there. You see what he did? That little, it's happened so fast right there. And he's done it for so long now. But to get that hand, and you'll see the same amount of knuckles on that left hand each and every time when you grip the club properly and but he's just he's so used to doing it and it's just part of his habit that helps make him as consistent as possible in a very inconsistent game yeah i love what you're saying steve he, he he's using his body his natural body shape and hang of his arms to his advantage scott as you said same thing i mean that is just great knowledge and, and how you grip the club affects how your golf club comes from away from the ball, how your most importantly, his lead arm. We saw Justin Thomas a little while ago, and Justin Thomas needs to do more what Ricky Fowler is doing now and, and vice versa, because, uh, you know, Justin Thomas is very high with his left arm. Ricky Fowler has perennially been very low and around with his arm plane. And so he's what he's done with Butch Harmon, trying to get the club more vertical, get that lead oh, arm, that glove arm that. more that's vertical. And that's really helped that his field. ascension. Let's watch this backswing. It happens quick. But his left arm is pretty much straight across his shoulders at the top of the backswing, whereas you were just saying, Justin Thomas, his left arm kind of is up more around his neck. So watch the left arm where it goes across his chest at the top of the backswing. Perpendicular to the spine. There you go. That's perfect. Well, we are headed to a final break. We'll come back to wind it down and wrap it up here from Riviera in a couple of moments. At PGA Tour, we use technology to elevate our fan experience and our events. From new technologies in our telecasts to tour casts, live leaderboards, and live statistics, technology is bringing our fans closer to our players like never before. With artificial intelligence, the cloud, and augmented reality, we're going to be able to create new and exciting experiences for our fans now and into the future. In golf and at Genesis, innovation is the key to reaching new levels of success leading to breakthroughs that continuously raise the bar, and technology plays an important role. At Genesis, we utilize technology with the specific purpose of creating a more personalized and convenient driving experience with new features that go beyond the road and are changing the future of personal mobility altogether. We continue to look to technology to enhance our customer experiences and innovate beyond what anyone thought was possible. On the tee from Cypress, California, amateur Tiger Woods. How about that action? 32 years ago, the 16-year-old driven up from Orange County, California to make his debut here at Riviera. Well, he was no secret, and it was just a little bit of a uh, preview to what we were going to get to experience for uh, several decades. It was uh, really cool to uh, watch Tiger throughout his career. Tiger in the raw. 
and we are thrilled to experience it once more. We'll take it whenever we get it. We don't know how many more times we're going to be able to see Tiger Woods in competition, but he will tee it up this week alongside Justin Thomas and Gary Woodman in tomorrow's opening round. They're off at 1225 Eastern time. He competed in the Pro-Am today and immediately afterward went into the press center to meet with the media. Uh, I think that more than anything that I try and do from a technical standpoint is making sure that I can still hit the golf ball flush and solid. You know, I, I don't have this the same speed I used to have. I don't have the ability to practice the same amount of hours. Um, uh, but I still do work on making sure that I can hit the ball out of, out of the middle of the face. And if I can do that consistently, one of the reasons why I, I really don't have a coach right now, um, the, the, what my body does from a day to day, week to week, just looks kind of different. Uh, I can't really model myself or, or fit any kind of model. And a lot of it is based on my, my hands and my feel. And I, I have built this golf swing uh, in, in the last few years, or four or five years, based on my hands and what that feels like. And what that, what that looks like, it, it doesn't really, I don't, sometimes it doesn't look pretty, um, but I can still hit the ball flush. Any athlete that has been injured in any sport has to make concessions, right, Steve? And the golf swing from the balls of a player's feet to the top of his head is the synchronization of often violent moves of different body parts. And if one isn't working so great, then another one has to pick up the slack. Has Woods been able to construct a golf swing that works for him at this point in his career? Well, he definitely has. You heard a little bit of that right there with the ability. He's, he's having to use more hands than he's ever used in his golf swing. In the past, I mean, it, we've seen many iterations of Tiger Woods over the course of the years. I mean, this is essentially Tiger 6.0 uh, right now that we're seeing. But this is uh, a couple swings from Tiger that that you will see uh, back from 2007 and 2018, and there was a lot that transpired between the left knee and all that, but let's take both of these swings uh, up to the top, and let's just take a watch at his beautiful, let's take the one on the left first, so you'll watch the beautiful grip on the left hand, and then we'll take this all the way up to the top, and you'll see the immense width. Now, golf swing, kind of like you said, Swanee, it's a mixture of really three forces. It's a rotational, it's the lateral motion, and it's the vertical motion. Now, Tiger, in the past, has been able to use a little bit more lateral motion in his golf swing. So he shifts off the ball just a little bit. And we'll take a look at the one on the right as well. And we'll take that all the way up to the top. Now, this 2018 version had a little bit more rotation. You know, he, he definitely got more into this uh, when he started working well, with, uh, with Chris Como, Sean Foley. That rotation staying a little bit more on the left. Beautiful seated position really into his hips. Still had a lot of rotation into his hips that maybe today he doesn't have because of the back fusions and whatnot. But let's take that one on the left down to the bottom and we'll watch as he goes through you'll see these hips really unwind beautifully the shoulders will follow and that left leg straightens up and we can take that all the way through to the finish as well if you want all the way through beautiful finish balance on that left foot and we get that one on the right as it goes all the way through and this one he was a little late on this swing this was the swing that he blocked out to the right just a little bit but that right side didn't get quite fully into that left foot. The hip girl didn't quite turn. But still, th this was a, always great to watch Tiger Woods do his thing, no matter what it is, no matter where it is. And this week, we've got him on full display here in Tinseltown, guys. Father Time is, is undefeated, Jay. Let's, uh, <laughs> all the great ones. As Tiger said, you get aged out of, of any sport. Let's uh, let's appreciate the man and savor what we've got here. You really do, and, and Tiger has had a lot of injuries, a lot of surgeries, that type of thing. As he said in his press conference, he's had to piece together a swing. It's not a swing that he grew up with. He's doing it with his hands. He's manipulating. Let's see how he can do it this week. It's going to be exciting to watch. PJ Tour Live coverage starts at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. Golf Channel's opening round coverage of the Genesis Invitational starts Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. For Jay Townsend, Steve Scott, our entire production crew, along with Graham Dillette, who's on the range there at Riviera. I'm John Swansek. Thanks for being part of the show. And enjoy the Genesis Invitational this week at Riviera.